This is a revision video about the GCSE biology topic of the nervous system. This comes up in the homeostasis and response chapter of AQA GCSE biology and combined science, although some schools and textbooks and things do call it coordination and control instead. By the end of this video, you should be able to list the parts of the nervous system that are involved in a reflex reaction, describe the structure and the function of synapses, explain why reflex reactions are necessary, and describe the steps in a reflex reaction. We're not going to go into the biology required practical in this video, that gets its own separate video. Coordination and control in the human body are carried out either by the endocrine system, which involves hormones and which has a separate video also in the series, or by the nervous system. If you've watched the introductory video at the start of this series, then you know that both of these systems are made up of receptors, coordination sensors and effectors. A receptor is a cell that is sensitive to a change in the environment, what we call a stimulus. So this includes the retina cells in the back of your eye, which can detect light, um, the cells in your skin, which are sensitive to pressure, pain and changes in temperature, cells in your tongue and nose, which are responsive to chemicals, and cells in your ears, which are responsive to sound waves. After the receptors receive that information, because they're sensitive and can sense the environment around them, this is passed on as an electrical impulse. These electrical impulses provide information that goes to the coordination centre. And in this instance, this is the CNS, the central nervous system. The central nervous system is made up of the brain and the spinal cord. The CNS is responsible for coordinating the response of the effectors. This means making sure that all the effector organs that are involved in a particular response are responding at the same time. If you imagine if a response requires a muscular reaction, it's important that all of the muscles are contracting in the right order at the right time and that one muscle isn't moving before the others are ready to move. Effectors aren't just muscles though, they can also be glands. In order to reduce the total number of neurons or nerves that the body needs, there isn't a one-to-one -one connection between every single receptor cell and every single effector organ. Instead, one neuron connects a receptor to a coordination centre, and from there, separate neural pathways take the signal further to the different effector organs. This allows one neuron to coordinate with tens of others. It also means that there are small gaps between the neurons, but the electrical signal can't jump across that. These small gaps are called synapses, and at the synapse, the neuron releases a chemical called a neurotransmitter. This is able to diffuse across the gap, across the synapse, between the two neurons. So it goes from one neuron to the next neuron. When it binds to receptors on the second neuron, this triggers the next electrical impulse, and so the information continues to be relayed. Pause the video and make sure that you can write down what we mean by a synapse and how information passes across a synapse. A synapse is a gap or a junction between two neurons and what happens is that the first neuron produces a chemical that we call a neurotransmitter and this then diffuses across the synapse, across the gap and it bonds to the second neuron triggering a new electrical impulse. One of the most common topics for exam questions about the nervous system is reflex reactions. These are the things that your body does so quickly to defend itself that you don't even know they're happening a lot of the time. Things like shutting your eyes if something's going to fly into them, or quickly snatching your hand away if you touch something that's hot or painful. Reflex reactions are defined as being rapid or extremely quick and automatic. That means you don't need to think about them because they don't involve the conscious thinking part of your brain. You also didn't need to learn how to do them. You were born knowing that pain was a bad thing and that if something hurt, you should move away from it as quickly as possible. Pause the video here to quickly check that you've understood about reflex reactions. Reflex reactions are defined as being automatic and rapid, and both removing your hand from a hot stove and your pupils narrowing are examples of reflex reactions. In order to describe what happens during a reflex, you need to be able to name six parts of the nervous system. We have the receptors, which are responsible for sensing the stimulus, three types of neuron, sensory neurons, relay neurons and motor neurons, the central nervous system and an effector gland or an effector organ. 
Remember, effectors are going to be muscles or glands. In order to check that you've understood the vocabulary so far, pause the video and make sure that you can write down what the difference is between the function of a receptor and an effector. Give one example of each in your answer. A receptor is a cell that can detect a stimulus or a change in the environment. An example of this could be the light detecting cells in the retina or the cells in the ears that detect sound or the cells in the nose and the tongue that detect chemicals or the, um, the cells in your skin that detect pain, pressure and changes in temperature. On the other hand, an effector affects a response. It makes a change happen and it could be a muscle or a gland. Let's use this example to describe what's happening in a reflex arc. In this example, someone has a drawing pin pushed into their hand and so as a response to the pain, they're moving their hand out of the way. The first thing that happens is that the receptors detect the stimulus, which here is the pain of having a pin pushed into them. The receptors need to pass that information to the coordination centre, and they do this by an electrical signal travelling along the first of our neurons. The first neuron is called the sensory neuron. It's the one that's connected to the cells that are doing the sensing. This carries an electrical signal to the central nervous system. Once it gets there, there's a synapse between the sensory neuron and the next neuron, which we call the relay neuron. You can think of this a bit like a relay race. You've probably done a 4x100 meter relay at some point, and you know that in a relay you pass the baton from one person to the next person. So here at this synapse, the electrical signal causes a chemical to be released, that neurotransmitter, which flows across the synapse, and then the second neuron carries the, um, the signal through the central nervous system. On the other side, there's another synapse, and this connects to the motor neuron. Motor means to do with motion, so it's called this because it's probably going to connect to a muscle which is going to allow us to move. And we're going to call that muscle the effector. So the effector is going to be responsible for, in this instance, contracting and moving the hand out of the way, but in another instance, it could be a gland and it could cause a hormone to be secreted. So when you approach these questions about reflex reactions, we start off by saying the stimulus and naming whatever the stimulus is, is detected by a receptor in wherever it is, in the eye, in the ear, in the skin, the receptor generates a nervous impulse or an electrical impulse that passes along the sensory neuron to the relay neuron, which is located in the spinal column or you could say the central nervous system. The relay neuron then relays that impulse to the motor neuron, which passes it to the effector. And then the effector, which in this instance was the muscle but could be a gland, causes the hand to be moved out of the way. Here's an example for you to have a go at. Pause the video and see if you can write down the steps in the reflex arc. When a bright light is shone in somebody's eye, there's a stimulus, which is the bright light, which is detected by the receptor, the cells in the back of the retina of the eye. The receptors generate a nervous impulse, which passes along the sensory neuron. It goes to the relay neuron, which is located in the central nervous system. The impulse then passes along the motor neuron, until it gets to the effector, which is the muscle in the iris, that coloured ring around your pupil. These muscles contract and this reduces the light entering the eye. Thank you very much for watching and I hope that you found that a useful introduction to the nervous system. If you're also learning about the required practical for this topic, then stay tuned for the next video and don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCC Biology content coming soon.